a historical take on Haddonfield's horror icon. This is the Funko Savage World Halloween Resurrection, Michael Myers. Myers makes the list along with Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Pinhead, and Leatherface from the first series, and hopefully not the last series, of Funko's Savage World lineup. If you've seen enough of these videos, which I hope you have, I hope, hope you have, you'll know that these stand exactly six inches in height. So let's see if Michael Myers varies at all. And we'll put it right to the top of his hair. Could it be? Perhaps. He is a little bit shorter. According to the tape measure, the tape measure of terror, the figure stands at 5.6 inches. And we switch that over to centimeters it gives us a much smaller number at 14.2 versus some of the other figures that we've looked at. So let's put that theory to a test. We're gonna grab Michael Myers and next, next to Pinhead. Yeah, I must have had my eyes closed when I was measuring it. Michael Myers actually is a little bit taller than Pinhead. And he is also, we'll bring in Leatherface. Put him right there. We'll also bring in Freddy Krueger, put him right there. Sorry, sorry, Pinhead, we'll just move him over a little bit. And then the one that we started with, here he is next to Jason Voorhees. I've just continued to keep the sword in his hand. Yeah, all the figures not only are the same build, but they do appear to be all the same, rough, roughly all the same height. Accessory-wise, Michael Myers gets himself a pair of butcher knives. They seem to be identical to one another, and it makes me wonder why we even needed two butcher knives as opposed to one. You never really see Michael Myers running around with two blades in his hand, yet Funko feels the need to give him two. I guess if you lose one, you got the extra. But technically, he does have two open hands. So let's put that theory to, to the test. We can put those knives into his hand. And one thing you'll painfully see is that he doesn't hold the knives well. They sit incredibly loose. Oh, that's so sad. What I would have loved to do is actually take one of the knives and f have it facing the opposite way. And, well, you just can't do that. You put the knife in his hand, it's just going to fall out. So that's a bit of a stinkeroo. There's not really much you can do. Uh, as you can see, the fists, the hands are way too open. They should have made the handles a little bit broader. Let me also just say, too, for it being savage, nothing really too savage about these knives. They could have added, like, roping or something around the handle portion. Am I being too critical? Am I? I, I don't know sometimes. Sometimes I, sometimes I feel like I am a little too harsh on figures. But I speak what I think, and I certainly do think that the handles needed to be a little bit broader. At the very least, it would look like they would be a little bit more savage. And certainly would also mean that he'd be able to hold them properly. I'm just gonna lay them right there. Just not even speak of them again until the end of the review. Let's have a look at Michael Myers. And very funny enough, similar to Pinhead, we get a specific title franchise, a title of the franchise, with Halloween Resurrection. Pinhead was specifically from Hell on Earth, and here we have Michael Myers specifically from Resurrection. I don't know why they chose Resurrection as opposed to simply just calling it Halloween, unless licensing as it is, they couldn't use just Halloween, so they had to use the one that they had available. I don't know. Either way, it's a pretty good-looking Michael Myers. I can't even believe that I thought at the beginning when looking at Jason that Michael Myers had gray. I guess I must have just looked at the figure quickly, assumed it was gray, and moved on my merry little way. 
gray could have also worked quite well for this Michael Myers because I feel like the face sculpt not only is really good, but it looks a lot like Curse of Michael Myers. Uh, he does have the burn on the side of his face or some disfigurement on the side of his mask. I don't know if it's intentionally supposed to be there, but none of that would be... In fact, actually, none of this really looks like Resurrection's mask. Again, I'm not going to get overly critical and nitpick every single thing, but it's interesting to call it Resurrection Michael Myers when I feel like the mask looks much more like Curse of Michael Myers. But I like the head sculpt quite a bit. You don't see his eyes, which is good. Uh, he's got the big tuft of hair. I don't know what's happening on the side here. I've got a little bit of paint. I'm assuming that that wasn't intentional. Somebody just said, hey, you know what? Let's just put a big smear of, of uh, brown on the side of his face, just for no apparent reason whatsoever. But I like the head sculpt. It's really good. The outfit, as best we can come up with, looks like, I believe they're called boilers, um, where are they are the mechanic onesie suits. In this case, actually, they've split it off where you've got the top section, of almost like a tunic, that's been belted off, because apparently they have belts back in Savage Time, and then his leggings are a separate color. His boots, though, match the top portion. And I guess for it looking a little bit more cruder, they did stitch in the front and stitched around the pocket area just to make it look like it's a little bit more uh, savagely fashioned. I like the ripped away sleeves as well as the ripped away collar. They've painted the under, the under neck area which still allows the figure to rotate his head. We'll talk all about that in a second. Got some gauntlets there on the sides of his arm. And again, the boots. No fur, actually, on the tops of these boots. No way, siree. Uh, these ones are just uh, just regular, like, boots. I'm not sure what these are supposed to be. I'm, like, looking at the other figures, and I don't think any of the other figures have this. The closest one I was thinking it could have matched to was Pinhead. But Pinhead doesn't have that. So I don't know why they put bands there on Michael Myers. I don't really think leg bands when I think Michael Myers myself, but that's what they've decided to put that in there for. It almost even looks like he's supposed to be wearing shorts. Ah, so let's have a look at Jason Voorhees. I'm dropping all this stuff on the side here. Let's have a look at Jason Voorhees. Does he? No, actually, he doesn't either. I really don't know why they put that there. I guess it's just for... Just detailing for the sake of adding detailing. The skin is a little on the lighter shade, but really all the figures have light shades of skin of varying tones. Um, Jason's is a little bit more peach colored. Actually, you know what? As you can see right there, Jason's a little bit more darker in color. Paler is Michael Myers, as he, as he really should be. But in this instance, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of carryovers other than just like initial under molds. Like, the arms are identical. You can see that they've added some drastic changes between the two different figures. The grips are also looking, looking as if they are identical to one another. Boots are different as well, and the boots will vary from figure to figure. I think, actually, My Myers is the only one, like I said, that doesn't have the fur trim on the top of his boots. I don't know why they just felt the need that this particular one didn't need it, when even, like, a pinhead actually still had it. See, just little observations. That's, that's my job. That's my job. I gotta bring out observations and point out little specifics like that. Specifics of posability. Michael Myers, his head rotates all the way around. Uh, his arms rotate all the way around. Somebody uh, probably will be asking me, do these hinge out? They don't. See, I'm thinking ahead. I'm trying to think, what would you guys possibly ask me? No, the arms don't hinge out. No, the hands don't hinge out. And I'm having a turkey club sandwich for lunch. If that was the other question somebody was gonna ask. Waist swivels all the way around. Uh, the legs split out, being that they are ball joints. And the uh, legs move forward and back. No peg holes on the undersides of his feet. None of the figures really had peg holes on the undersides of his feet, of their feet. And neither does Michael Myers. Just for final looks, let's just bring... We'll put Michael Myers right there. Hopefully get him to stand. Stay, stay, stay. We'll just move the knives out of the way. We don't care about those. Let's bring in some of the other figures once again. There is Jason Voorhees. We've already looked at these, I know. Pinhead, right there. Might as well wrap up this review with all of the figures. There's Freddy Krueger. And there was Leatherface. Where was his chainsaw? There's his chainsaw. Come on, man. Final looks, man. We gotta get this all going. Get your stuff together. And there was Leatherface just in the back corner. And there's the full lineup of five. 
looking at these right now, and I'm not just saying this because it's Halloween time, but I think my favorite is Michael Myers. He's not as detailed, both coloring and sculpt, as maybe some of the others, but uh, I just think he looks the neatest. I like his mask, even though it's not really technically resurrect Resurrection's mask, but I just really like Myers as my favorite. I also like Pinhead. So I'd probably say my favorites are Michael Myers, then possibly Pinhead, then Freddy, maybe Jason, and then Leatherface. I know Leatherface I really like too, but gosh darn it, I still have a soft spot for Jason Voorhees. But let me know down below of the five new Savage World figures, which one is your favorite? It's obvious the Funko didn't simply reach their hand into a hat of Halloween film titles and pull out, ironically, the worst film in all of Halloween's franchise. No, there's got to be a reasoning why they used Resurrection instead of just using Halloween, similar as to why they had to use Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, as opposed to just simply using Hellraiser. A lot of it probably had to do with, with licensing, and that's what they had at their disposal. I'm glad that they didn't at least make a mask that looked like and resembled the Resurrection mask, because again, that's one of the worst Halloweens, both movie-wise and mask-wise. I despise that movie. The mask here instead looks something closer to Curse of Michael Myers. The costume here is blue, more of his traditional colors, and I think this could have also worked well in gray. Maybe that's why I thought that initially looking at Jason Voorhees, I thought that Myers' costume was gray. I didn't, didn't think it was blue. Sure enough, the nice combination of the dark blues and light blues work really well with Michael Myers, which again looks back then to what I thought with Jason Voorhees. Jason Voorhees should have really had gray instead of green. I know we're beating a dead horse with that one. I really like this figure release, and it's my favorite of the Savage World. It's just a shame that Michael Myers can't hold his knives better than what he can. They sit really loose, and it's just a sheer miracle that I'm actually get, getting the knife to be inverted the way I have it currently in his hand. Yes, I really do like this Savage lineup quite a bit. I hope that Savage World will expand to a series too. And if they do, let me know down below who you'd like to see make the cut, if you will, from a Savage World lineup of series two. In the meantime, though, this was the last video. Kind of sad. That's I don't ever like to say it's the last video, but that's what it is. It's the last video of the Savage World lineup from the folks over at Funko. I hope you guys certainly have enjoyed it. And don't worry, that's not the end of Spotober. We've got a whole lot of stuff still coming your way. I say we, like I have a production team, but it's just me. It's me doing all the recording. It's me doing all the editing. It's me doing all the posting. It's just me. So if I get hit by a, a big meteor, oh, I just now jinxed it. If I get hit by a big giant meteor, if that's it, channel's gone. What a dismal way to wrap up a final looks. Dismalness aside, certainly if you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? We're going to have some more spooktacular, terrific, terror, terrorific, not terrific, terrorific videos coming your way for the rest of Spottober. Which, for any normal person that doesn't follow this channel, that's just October. I just put spot in the front of it. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below. That will guarantee that when new videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. And to ensure that you haven't missed out on anything that's been posted up to this point, why not swing over to the homepage and check out the videos section. Everything I've done up to this point and beyond will be featured there in the videos section. It's the best way to guarantee it. You can use the bell notification. I don't even think it works. I think somebody just made that up one day. Why don't we just get them to hit the bell notification? Well, what does it really do? It does absolutely nothing. It That bell does literally nothing. And wouldn't that be just the ultimate joke? But the best way to guarantee you that you never miss out on anything I've posted up to this point, head over to the homepage. Yeah, that's the best way, best solution to this problem. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And I'll see you next time.